I'm good. <laughs> good morning. Uh, I want to, before starting, I, I want to say I'm sorry that I can't um, participate more in this. I really have many friends, old and new, here, and uh, I'm teaching three classes, and you know, so it's just Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and it's just my fault, but uh, it's also true. Uh, so I, I, I've, uh, I, I want to talk about a class of problems that, uh, um, well, uh, I, I am working on. And I've heard about it, and you all hear about it if you ever talk to anybody not in this community but who actually does simulations. Uh, when I first started thinking about um, uh, card shuffling, I talked to a friend, a physicist, and I said, you know, how many times do you have to shuffle a deck of cards to mix it up? And he said, well, it depends what game you're playing. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, no, no, no. Okay, so we have settled on global measures of, of convergence, but um, uh, very often when people run Markov chains, they don't care about all features. They care about whatever they're running their Markov chain for, the magnetization in the icing model, and the fact that this or that does or doesn't converge, good for you. Uh, and so chemists and physicists talk about things, they say sentences like, well, yeah, those are the slow modes, but we don't care about that. It's the local features, and they equilibrate much faster. So I have wanted to try to make sense out of that. And just uh, to say a simple example to keep in mind, um, uh, uh, so I call features, <laughs> and I well, you'll see what I mean, but uh, and what I have in this talk is a bunch of examples that I, I which will remind us that that this is an area, and then uh, some sort of unifying thoughts, but mostly it's it's open problems. Um, so consider a simple random walk, a simple random walk on uh, CP, the integers mod P and P is a prime just to not have any problems, 0 up to P minus 1. And, you know, it's the plus or minus 1 walk on, on this guy. There are P points around the circle, drunkard's walk. And um, uh, so suppose in this toy problem, you were running your walk to estimate the size of a set, which is a thing which is done a fair amount. And, well, if the set a uh, is the even numbers, um, 0, 2, 4, 6, etc., just every other number around the circle, um, you get random lightning fast. Any finite number of steps w will do. Yeah, and so, uh, and if you want a, if you want a, a math quantification of that, the probability that xn, uh, your walk at step n starting from zero, um, is contained in A uh, minus a half, that's what the measure would be, I'm thinking of P as being large, is less than or equal to, literally less than or equal to, e to the minus, uh, minus n over to, um, uh, that's, that's actually true. And so, um, uh, you know, if n is 10 or however, you know, I mean, you know, this gets random very, very fast, okay? Uh, but if a, uh, if a is equal to the bottom half of the circle, I, I won't, here's A, <laughs> the bottom half of the circle, it takes you P squared steps to get random. You have to wrap around a lot, and of course, right? I mean, I'm not saying anything, but if A is equal to the bottom half, uh, uh, it takes order P squared steps. Uh, necessary and sufficient. So that's a simple example, and of course this is a toy example, but in... Just to clarify, you mean lazy simple random walk here? Or? No. So you have a... I don't have a parity problem if P is a prime. Did you come late? <laughs> I said P is a prime. There's no parity problem if P is a prime. Well, for small n, I mean, how is n and P, how are n and P related? P is large. And if, if n is 10, this bound is... If, if n is any growing number and P is large, you, you, I could put in those... Uval, 
Sorry, grow up. <laughs> uh, you know, that is, if I do random, if P is large and if I do random walk, and I'm trying to estimate the even numbers, any growing number of, any growing number of steps, it's close to random. So it, you don't want to argue with that. I, I still do. <laughs> uh, you start at zero, so that's Yeah, more than half of your circle are even, right? Oh, I, 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 come on. <laughs> I mean, uh, okay, so that 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 is just an example to 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 keep in mind, uh, and so what I want to do is talk about some um, some uh, examples. I want to get as good a way of communicating as I can, so I'll keep trying these until I get one that I'm that I'm happy with, uh, and let's see. So the um, the, a set of examples where a lot is known, it's just there are lots of examples and to see what kinds of differences there are. So uh, f example um, for riffle shuffling, <coughs> and uh, the, the, the usual model of you cut the cards about in half and you go according to the Gilbert Chan and Reed's model, I won't say more about that. Uh, uh, we showed with Dave Byer, uh, and Aldous did too, uh, that uh, three halves uh, log to the base two of n plus c uh, steps, but this is the operant part of it, are uh, necessary and sufficient to get uh, roughly e to the minus c close to, um, close to randomness. Um, uh, in total variation, so let me not let me not <laughs> write that down more carefully. But suppose you care about features. For example, um, in uh, the, this, I'm giving four extra talks this week. The one on Tuesday was for the casino security uh, conference in Vegas, uh, which had 700 people who. Don't, didn't look like you. <laughs> uh, uh, they had suits on, for example, and many of them had broken noses. Uh, um, uh, and um, uh, so they, don't, they say, listen, you know, in blackjack or in baccarat, uh, the suits don't matter, and the, the tens, jacks, queens, and kings all are the same. They're tens, and so maybe fewer shuffles are suffice. And so that's a, now a math question. That's a feature, and how, how long does it take if that's all you care about? And um, uh, so let me go through some of the things that we know. Uh, these are just examples to remind you. So if if you just care about the red-black pattern, uh, so for reds and blacks, I'll, I'll write it this way, and there are f fancier versions of it, but log to the base 2 of n plus c, and there's a cutoff in c, but this 3 halves changes to, um, changes to, uh, to a 1 in front of the log 2. Um, if you, if you care about randomizing the top card only, so you start, you know, not, no, if you start with the ace of spades on top, you want to randomize the ace of spades, so uh, I'll, I'll write ace of spades, but I mean the card which is originally on top. It's th the same number of steps. Now that's a little surprising. The, the number of things I want to get random in with reds and blacks is 2n choose n. It's a big space, whereas the number of things I want to get random with on the ace of spades is just a single card. And yet it takes the same number of steps necessary and sufficient to get random. So it's something to think about. Perhaps more interesting in a certain sense is if you want to randomize the top card, that's different. <laughs> uh, that is, I, I care about uh, what card is on top now after shuffling. Okay, That takes a half log in. So if somebody understands that, I'd be, I mean, it's a theorem, but uh, uh, log to the base 2 of, of n, um, as, as long as I'm, uh, well, I skipped. Uh, if you, some time we did, uh, the length of the longest increasing subsequence, I'll write L of pi, uh, so that's a famous feature, uh, and suppose you care about that feature, uh, it's 5, 6, uh, uh, log to the base 2 of n. Um, uh, the number of descents, uh, just the descent pattern, the up-down pattern in a permutation. Uh, descents is 1 half. 
uh, log to the base 2 of n, uh, and again plus c. Uh, and I'll continue over here, and I'll stop soon. Uh, it's not that I've run out of features that we know about. But if you care about the cycle structure, how many fixed points, how many transpositions, how many three cycles, the entire cycle structure, OK, the entire cycle structure, so cycle structure, Um, it's uh, any growing number, C of n. So that is you know, log, log, log n if n is large. I mean, any growing number, the entire cycle structure is random. If you care about just the large cycles, for example, the length of the longest cycle in a random permutation is about 0.63n. Uh, the long cycles, the longest cycle, long, longest cycle, uh, the, the answer is 1. Uh, after one riffle shuffle, if n is large, uh, the, uh, the, the distribution of the length of the longest cycle matches the, the distribution in a random permutation. So these are some examples of features. Now, there is a handout, and uh, I don't know. Let's try. Is there? Well, I have it all in memory. Uh, there is a handout, and um, uh, uh, so there are some some numbers there, and um, let me um, well. I, I, I. The most surprising set of numbers are the second block of numbers. So let me take you through that, because that's very, very surprising to me, both intuitively, mathematically. I don't understand it. That's work of Conger and Howland, and there's a reference in the handout. Thank you, person. Um, and um, so these are total variation results, and they're gotten by various ways, asymptotics and and very, very sophisticated computing, and I, I recommend their paper. But let me take you through a little bit of this. Um, uh, so this is this table, and um, the, uh, the first row is in total variation distance to uniformity for riffle shuffling in this Gilbert Shannon Reads model. The only thing that's a little strange is A is 2 to the K if, if I'm doing K shuffles. They're using my notation, so I shouldn't complain. But uh, so A is 16, is 4 shuffles, 5 shuffles, 6 shuffles, 7 shuffles. That's that 128. Is that OK with everybody? So the first row, you can see th they're the numbers from the work I did with Dave Beyer. And those are exact numbers. We know them to 70 places of rational arithmetic. And they have an approximation. And I'm going to come to some of those approximations. And their approximation isn't great when with a small number of shuffles, by the time you get to seven shuffles, their approximation's pretty good. And then it gets better and better and closer and closer uh, as, as time goes on. But that first row is just to say, you know, after seven shuffles, the total variation distance is about point, you know, point three three. And, uh, and uh, then, then it cuts down and goes exponentially fast to zero. OK, so what they're doing is a different kind of feature. And uh, let me try to explain that. Um, uh, bridge is a standard game with 52 cards in which there are four hands of 13 cards dealt out. Now, bear with me for a second. F first, let's take the stupid way of dealing. So stupid dealing, which is you take the top 13 cards, you give them to the south player, you, to, the, to the first player. You take the next 13 cards, you give them to the next. You just take, you know, nobody deals that way, but if the cards are mixed up, it doesn't matter at all, right? So just suppose you did that. That's a, a way of dealing, okay? You could now, it doesn't, it, the, the order within the hand doesn't matter. So you don't care about all 52 factorial arrangements being equally likely. You just care that the bridge hands have the right distribution. So that's a feature. It's just the group acting on the other side. And we'll come to that. But you know, it should be less shuffles. Okay? And it is a little bit less. If you look, the, the total variation distance to uniformity is, you know, so instead of being 0.33, it's 0.22 or whatever it is. It's a, it's a little, it's, you're closer, slightly closer. That's if I do dumb dealing, OK? Suppose now I do the normal way of dealing. OK, so I find this shocking. Somebody has an idea, great. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just deal around that way. How could it make any difference, right? Take a look. You're not looking, but 
should be. Uh, um, so take a look at the, um, at the, it's north, south, east, west to the 13th, and what you see is it's about a factor of 10 closer. Okay, so it's actually a factor of 13 closer. How, how could that be? What's going on? I mean, it's really interesting and seems to be true. Now, and this, again, for me, shocking, here's a, a strange way of dealing. Uh, I'll, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Just do that, okay? It's faster by another factor of 10. Okay, I believe this, this is true. It's very carefully done uh, by a, a team of people. Wherever I could check anything, it's right there. Not theorems. They're, they're, it's based on both simulation and an approximation, which match. But it is, seems to be the case that features can make a difference. Okay, that's, that's what I, yes, sir. So these days, uh, bridge hands are dealt by machine mostly. No, I mean, who says that? You are just now, but it's not true. Uh, in, in tournament play, in tournament play, uh, that's true, but certainly not most bridge hands are not tournament play and have nothing to do with the computer. Well, almost all club bridge in Europe anyway yeah, uses yeah. machine shuffling. And uh, I don't know what algorithm they use. I, I, I do. Uh, and so I did consulting for the bridge league and, uh, and uh, at first, they used random transpositions, not carefully. <laughs> that is, they did random transpositions, and they did 60 of them. <laughs> and it was, it's quite, was quite far. Now they use the, the usual random number generator. That's, I'm talking about in tournament play in the American clubs. But uh, that's not relevant to this particular conversation. It's another one. So let me, let me cut it off. Right. I, I'm happy to take it at the end, Martin, but it is not, not to do with features, right? It's a, it's a, uh, um, uh, so. Percy, still, uh, to help, to help uh, me and others here grow up, if P is large and N is, and, <laughs> and N is even, then the issue is whether you walk to the positive or the negative, but there's an error of one over root 10 from the possibility that you uh, get back to zero rather than, um, rather than go positive or negative. So the error for P large is over order one over root n rather than the minus n over two. Okay, that's fine, but still it's true that any growing number of, of, sure, of shuffle. I see, form. I see. That, that's the, that, that, thank you, okay. That, that is the chance that if you flip a, a fair coin n times that it comes up even. Right, but that's not, what's written there is that's, not correct. That's true, too. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Good, thank you. Um, good, so a question now arises. Obviously, from this kind of development, there are a lot of features that might be interesting, and how do you make any sense out of this? And, um, uh, and uh, um, there are various reasons for uh, thinking about that. If you're a senior person, like some of us, uh, it's, you, you, know, you might have infinitely many papers to referee. Somebody just takes some other random feature. And, so how do you make some sense out of that? What's an example of a, of a sort of sensible uh, bringing together of that? And so I want to talk about one of those, and that's this thing that uh, Sami Asaf and Sandarajan and I did called the rule of thumb. Uh, uh, so the rule of thumb. Uh, um, and uh, that's still about card shuffling, and so it's looking at the following kind of features. Um, uh, suppose that I have n cards, and um, I have uh, di of type i, uh, one, one less than or equal to i, less than or equal to m, uh, so maybe it's reds and blacks, maybe it's you know clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds. It's uh, it's the I just I only care about about this kind of feature. For example, for blackjack and uh, back at, blackjack and baccarat, uh, d one might be equal to d two 
equals D9 uh, is equal to 4, and D10 uh, uh, is equal to 16 if I got it right. Uh, so that, that's, a, that's a possible, you know, there's nothing, they don't have to be balanced in any way, but you just have different types of, of, of cards that you care about. And um, in order to state a, a theorem, I, I, I need to assume that DI is bigger than or equal to 3, okay, but I mean, so it doesn't cover the ace of spades, and uh, let me not try to make up this result. Um, uh, then uh, we worked in separation, which is, um, so uh, uh, the separation after k shuffles is the maximum uh, uh, in, I'll call it W, of 1 minus uh, the probability starting from wherever you started from uh, that you're in W, uh, well, uh, divided by uh, the stationary probability of, of W. So 1 minus, no, no absolute values, just 1 minus that. So look at the ratio of the, ch after being after k steps, look at the chance that you're at w after k steps, look at the stationary distribution after k steps, take that ratio, take the subtracted from 1, take the, take the maximum of that. Um, so that's an upper bound for total variation, and uh, it, it's, it's a, a lower bound within a factor of 2 in a certain sense. But anyway, it's a, it's a reasonable notion of, of distance 2, and it's a little easier to work with. And um, here's our theorem. I'll, I'll write it here. Uh, uh, the, um, uh, so sep k, so I'm in this situation. I've shuffled, the, I'm doing ordinary riffle shuffles, or those, that model of riffle shuffles, uh, sep k. Uh, is equal to, well, it's, there's a formula, but let me write it down, uh, 1 minus 1 plus eta, eta's going to be tiny, uh, times 2 to the k times m minus 1 uh, divided by n plus 1, n plus m minus 1. Unfortunately, it goes on a little bit. There's a single sum. Uh, J equals 0 to M, the number of types, uh, alas, alternating, minus 1 to the J, uh, N, let me get that right, M minus 1, choose J, so it's something, 1 minus J over 2 to the K, that's the number of shuffles, and the exponent here is N plus M minus 1, okay. So there's some formula. And eta, uh, which is tiny, uh, uh, is less than or equal to uh, 1 plus n squared over 3 times 2 to the k plus m plus 1 squared. And then this is all raised to the m minus 1 power, except this bracket, this is a bracket here. Minus one, so impossible to parse. But the the point of of it is the following: um, I can't say. It, but that there there are several points to make about this formula. First of all, for reasons that we try to explain in the paper, it's amazingly accurate. That is, it's provable, and you can check how big eta is, but it's more accurate than we can prove. So it's accurate to sort of, seems to be accurate to five and six decimal places, and for ends that matter, uh, for deck sizes that matter. So, and then, I can't say it's log n. I mean, I, I, I can in some instances, but it's this. But this is trivial to compute, you know, it's just a single sum, and so we can compute it, and that's where the numbers on the top uh, bracket come from, and so I want to take you through that. But points to be noted about this is, are that um, it doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, depend on the, the details of the DIs in any way. That is, it's true, just it's true. That is for very, very general 
you know, just doesn't doesn't depend on very much. And that's how many that's how many uh, shuffles, um, or that's what that's what the separation is. And just to look a little bit, um, so uh, to help you look at separation, uh, some people like that. I do. Um, so the top row uh, is the results from the work with Dave Beyer. That is, that's the exact separation. And so you can see after seven shuffles, the separation still one. Uh, but you know, by eleven shuffles, it's a half, and then it goes down by factors of two. That's just the way. That's the way those numbers go. Once they start going down, they go down by factors of two, and that keeps going forever. That's a theorem. Um, for a blackjack, uh, well, you know, the, it's smaller. Uh, after, you know, 11 shuffles, it's a factor of, you know, four or five um, smaller. And, uh, and uh, if you care about suits, it's smaller still. If you care about the ace of spades, the original top card, it's, um, it's, it's smaller still. The ace of spades and the red-black pattern are, are, seem to be the same, and maybe somebody can understand that someday. Um, and the bottom row is, well, in parapsychology experiments, they use 25 cards, which are five different symbols, each repeated five times. And uh, I have a long time fascination with debunking parapsychology research, and, um, and uh, so I, I, I did those numbers. Anyway, that's an example of, um, of what a general, you know, how you would make, how you would break away from doing examples one at a time. I'm going to come back a little bit and talk about techniques for proof, but um, uh, this is an example of how you could make a general, uh, a general statement. Yes? The eyes go. That's the point. They go. <laughs> they, they, they don't. The, the, this, this, we notice that they all canceled out. Uh, so, I mean, they, they don't cancel out, but they, we, we were able to prove a theorem for all DIs. Now, for all DIs bigger than or equal to three, right? So it's surprising. Right? It's interesting. The, the point I'm trying to make is there's interesting math to be done for this class of problems that is unifying in some way. I mean, that, that, that's, that, that's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not particularly trying to sell this result, even though it's a, it's a nice result. Now, one thing I know is that there is an eraser, and it's often stuck on the... There are two right on the board. On the board. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so... Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, this, this, this is the worst starting configuration, right? This, that's what max over W is saying. No, no, no. It's the... Where am I? Where uh, are we here? The, no, no. This is... Um, this actually doesn't depend on the starting, but... Uh, <laughs> my, my question is, you, you have these... Geez, you have these types. I mean, presumably it does matter sure. how you start off. Sure. So I'll, when I talk about how we prove things, I'll, I'll, I'll address that. And if I don't, get me, <laughs> as some people have. Uh, uh, but, but of course, right. So uh, maybe, well, there's no, let me, let me address that right now because there's no reason to, to okay. Uh, so let me say how this result is proved in outline, um, and um, so there are, th there are three steps to proving this kind of theorem, to, to usually to proving something about separation. Uh, so outline proof step one, um, you, you have to figure out um, what's the worst case configuration. So what's uh, W star, uh, which is the, the, the maximizing. Um, and so, for example, um, and these are little theorems. If you start with, for reds and blacks, if you start with all the reds on top and all the blacks under, then the worst case provably is all the reds on the bottom and all the blacks on top. So that's a little theorem. Uh, if you start with the ace of spades on top, the worst case is the ace of spades on the bottom. So they're all little combinatorial facts, and you've got to do them, and, and we are able to do that for, um, for, uh, for this general type. It's not always so simple, and they're, they're, they're little arguments. So that's the first thing you have to do. So the second thing you have to do, that's what makes life easier, is that you have to figure out what this is. So, uh, and let me, I did an example, I wrote down an example. Um, so uh, the second step in proving is you have to figure out what's P star K of W star, your, your 
the, the chance of being at your worst case uh, configuration, and after after W star after W star sorry after K steps, and for reds and blacks, um, this is equal to in the case of reds and blacks. So there's a formula, and it was one over two to the um, K times two N. This is a deck of two N cards, N reds and N blacks, uh, times a single sum J equals one to two to the K minus one of 2 to the k minus j to the n, j to the n minus j minus 1 to the n, um, period. Okay, so there's nice combinatorics, nice math to do in, in trying to derive formulas for, you know, you have a specific thing, and then these are, I mean, so that's a second thing, some miracle that you can do these. Uh, the formulas for general D are more complicated, but not so much more complicated that we couldn't write them down. And the third thing is you do calculus. I mean, so. Uh, and, and so you take this thing, and we, some of us like massaging expressions of that sort. And so does that, that is my attempt to answer your question. So I, of course it matters how you start and, and right. Uh, I mean, sort of the, but the, the reason I bring it up is it, it naively it appears like there should be some sort of duality between what you talked about in, in this second table. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they are they are duals. There's a group acting on the right and acting on the left, right? Okay, so, right. It, so it also tells you something about this. It, 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 sh it should, that's true, but I didn't know the dealing is, is funny. <laughs> funny. Something. Yeah, the shuffle certainly not reversible. The markup chains aren't reversible. Um, so the so that will let me conclude my my sh uh, shuffling example. I just wanted you to see there. You know, there's a little subject there, and and there are many other things to do in our world, but this is one of them. And I want to talk about one more example of features which I. Find interesting and which I don't know how to abstract, uh, and so uh, that's uh, so. This is just a new example, uh, and um, it's a simple random walk. And the Heisenberg group. Let me start with that one. Uh, so, uh, so I, I guess I call it U three of P uh, is the set of all three by three matrices, uh, uh, which go like that, uh, where x, y, and z are in uh, mod p, so in fp. Uh, and so I'll write, such a, uh, I'll write such a matrix as x, y, z. And if you multiply matrices, well, you know, x, y, z times x prime, y prime, z prime uh, is x pl plus x prime, y plus y prime, z plus z prime, plus x, y prime. Uh, if I got it right, if you just multiply the matrices. So th this is called the Heisenberg group mod P. And um, uh, oh, the walk I want to do is based on the uh, minimal set of generators. Uh, S, my generating set, is plus or minus 1, 0, 0, or um, um, 0, plus or minus 1. Uh, zero, and that's it. So it's four generators, and Q of uh, I don't know M uh, is you know one quarter if uh, M is contained in S and zero otherwise. And so this walk corresponds to you start at the identity matrix and you pick a row at random and you add or subtract it from the row above it. That's that's just row operations. That's that's what this walk corresponds to, and. Early on, I don't know how many years ago, with uh, with Solovkost, um, we showed that um, uh, p squared steps are necessary and sufficient for uh, total variation mixing. Uh, so I'll just write it: p squared steps are necessary and sufficient uh, for total variation mixing. Um, and uh, there's no cutoff, and so okay, and we have you know, sharp upper and lower bounds, but okay. Uh, and um, uh, so for years I've wanted to know, uh, and uh, I think Aaron Smith is here, and I tortured him trying to know it too, uh, but I finally tortured Bob Huff uh, into actually doing it. Uh, I wanted to know how this 1-3 coordinate behaves. 
and uh, just seemed to me that it would get random faster. And um, uh, with Bob Huff, um, we, we prove that uh, the, the, the third coordinate, the central coordinate, uh, the z-coordinate, um, takes uh, p steps, uh, you know, necessary and sufficient, uh, and, and okay. Uh, and now, so I hope. Well, I'll say a sentence about methods um, for for this too in a second. But uh, so features can get random faster. I mean, we've been saying that all time. And now let me do a higher dimensional version. Um, if I fix d, uh, fix a dimension, fix d, say five or some fixed d, uh, uh, and I look at uh, u d. Uh, P, uh, which is just D by D matrices. Uh, one, 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 zero, and then star, and star is in FP. So in the same walk, just you know, the same analog of the walk, pick a row at random and add or subtract it to the row above it. Um, uh, again, with solid cost, we showed that uh, P squared steps uh, is necessary and sufficient uh, for a total variation on the full group. But now, the work that we, we work quite hard to prove this uh, is we can, we can break this apart and see the probability waves coming in. So uh, um, the, just above the diagonal, on the first diagonal, that this is the main diagonal, uh, the first diagonal, if you just look at an entry on the first diagonal, or all of them, because D is fixed, uh, the first diagonal uh, um, p squared steps are necessary and sufficient. Uh, and uh, on the second diagonal, uh, p steps, second diagonal p steps. On the third diagonal, um, uh, p to the two thirds steps. Uh, and on the kth diagonal, it's uh, it's p to the two over k. Um, and um, so, sometime soon. Thank you, thank you. All right, it's very helpful. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I keep trying. Um, so, uh, can people parse this or understand what I just said? That is, as you go further and further up. Um, you get uh, you get closer and closer to random. This is important. Um, what time is it? Uh, okay. Uh, good. Good. Um, so um, the to say one sentence about the method of proof in this case. Uh, um, it's hard. <laughs> That's my sentence. But. Uh, um, uh, if I write these steps uh, as um, uh, if uh, if I write epsilon uh, delta zero for which of these four which of these four steps so epsilon delta will either be you know plus or minus one zero zero or zero plus or minus one zero okay just write it that way then the walk uh, the, the the z coordinate um, uh, the z coordinate is is equal to you can just write it out uh, it's epsilon uh, epsilon uh, I think it's d minus one times delta one plus delta d minus 2 um, plus epsilon d minus 2 times delta 1 plus and so on plus delta d minus 3 and on down to epsilon 2 delta 1. So mod, mod p. But so, and essentially these epsilons and delta are more or less independent of each other. And so one can write the thing that one wants to get one's hands on as a kind of standard probability sum of something like IID random variables. And then we blasted out a, a careful local limit theorem with a Berriusine type remainder uh, in order to study this mod p. We did it over z and then studied it mod, mod p. So, and if you if you look k above, instead of having quadratic sums, you have k-fold iterated things, but they're similar. 
The work is quite hard. It used so-called higher Fourier analysis, the kind of stuff that Green Tao and company have been selling to the world, and um, it, it was it was it was hard, honest work. <laughs> uh, but it's again, it's a there's a kind of unifying picture of some sort. And okay, so uh, so what are some questions? Well, um, going backward. Uh, I'd love to know what what I was doing here. <laughs> that is, uh, it, it's perfectly natural to choose coordinates for a group in a matrix representation. But if you want to try to say, if you do this on groups of order p to the n, pick a group that you're interested in of order p to the n. Uh, the, you know the. Uh, integers mod p, wreath the integers mod p, uh, so versions of lamplighter type groups. Uh, and if you try to think, what's the analog of these um, of these layers that I'm looking at? I don't know how to abstract this. Okay, that's one sentence. So uh, maybe somebody can think of it's something like going down the lower central series of the group, but it's not that because the, the the quotients aren't aren't quite like that. So I don't I don't know how to abstract that. Um, a I, I I I should say here, uh, you know, uh, Yuval and Alan Sly uh, did a very nice piece of work where d and p are allowed to grow together, and my results are for fixed d and large p. It would be interesting to, you know, to see what happens if d and p grow together. Uh, just as a last sentence to say, uh, or making a connection, um, uh, I gave this talk in Haifa, and Yuval was there, and at the end of it he said, you know, this work is very, very close to the work on Boolean functions. And uh, having now worked at Ryan O'Donnell's 600 and some odd page book, wonderful book, um, it's certainly true that is, um, there's a connection between the kinds of questions I'm asking and um, take your feature, a function, a set, and expand it in a basis of eigenfunctions, and then see, you know, can you get your hands on the coefficients of the expansion and eigenfunctions? And in the, the wonderful hypercube, which is as abelian a group as there is, um, uh, an awful lot of the work in Boolean function theory, work that Elkanon and others have been instrumental in doing, is getting bounds on those on, on the Fourier coefficients of interesting sets, sets like majority and, and other sets. And all of that can be translated into, if you care about this feature of the walk, it gets random at this rate. And there is a little list to be made of the type that I made for the shuffle group that would come from all of the hard work in that community. Um, a, an issue is, uh, you know, if you care about real Markov chains, good luck for you to you getting your hands on the eigenfunctions. You know, for the hypercube, well, thank you. You know, okay. Need anybody's help for that? Uh, but um, you know, it's it's not a so. A, a real the real challenge is we have many many methods for bounding rates of convergence of Markov chains to their stationary distributions. I haven't been able to figure out what coupling for a feature is or anything like that. And and I hope somebody here can. Thank you. Questions. Yeah, questions. Uh, do you, can you say something about a random set? For instance, you took two sets for the um, for the Perez random walk on the mod p numbers, which is one was totally unrandom, the bottom set, the other right. one sort of random, or even if it is. At least for that example, wouldn't it be true that if I pick a random set of half the size, <coughs> I need only a constant number of sets? I mean, is there something like that known for random sets? I, I didn't try to do it. Um, what I did notice, if you, you know, because it's it's so embarrassing to do one example at a time, it's natural to try to do something like that. Uh, I did notice that if I took a set like the square free numbers, um, which had a density, uh, like the multiples of three, or a set with a density where the the error in the density was, you know, was reasonable, uh, then. Uh, it gets random after any finite number of steps. I haven't thought about random sets, and it's a, a perfectly, you know, what does a typical set look like? It, I'll, I'll, I won't blame you, because A, you're my friend, and B, it's easy to blame myself, but 
I find in my life it's easy to make up questions like that. It is easy to make up questions like that, and then we study them. It's just been almost impossible to take some real Markov chain that somebody runs and take a feature of interest and say anything useful about it. And I think maybe it's better not to get lost in, well, what about this question? Then let's try to do a real problem. I'm talking to myself now, not you. But I mean, it's. It's a random question anyway. Yeah, <laughs> no, but I'll, I'll start working on it. <laughs> log, log squared in. Log squared. Hi, Chris. Yeah. So you can, can be next. The upper triangular group, you referred to the lower central series. So it looks as if as you go down the central series, um, things are mixing faster mm -hmm. deeper down the series, presumably because they're subject to and have more and more complicated conjugation actions by the things. Something like that. You don't, you don't, I don't, I wasn't able to make sense out of it. So in order to, I mean, I've tried. So it's natural to try to choose coordinates, you know, the, just so that you, you can join in our conversation. The, so the, there's the upper triangular group. The, the commutator subgroup is all matrices where the zero on the, just above the diagonal, and so the quotient by the commutator is just what's above the diagonal. The second commutator has zeros in the first two column, first two diagonals, and then star uh, above it. So, but the quotient by the second commutator is both of those columns. And so when I try to get my hands just on the second column, it's just take the center. You know, it, I don't know a group theoretic way of getting my hands on the center. That, so I, I don't, I couldn't make sense out of that. Philip Hall had magic for so-called regular P groups. They were very nice, there's a very nice coordinate system. I couldn't blend it with this theory. So it's not that it couldn't be done. I just, I tried and Emmanuel Braillard and Laurent tried and we couldn't do it. So we need another idea. Bless you, <laughs> welcome. Uh, so you, hi. So going back to the bridge dealing question, so for the <coughs> first game, you only care which sets of 13 cards each player receives. But there's another thing you might wonder about, which is if you deal in one of these ways, you receive your cards in a given order. Mm -hmm. And that order in which you receive your cards might give you more information about Absolutely. Them. And in fact, this back and forth shuffle might even be a bit vulnerable to this. Sort of west, south, south, west, and, and it has, and right, absolutely, absolutely. So it's a wonderful question, and I, I'll answer it in the following way. Um, uh, in Bridge, it's well known by experts that you can watch people sort their hand. And if somebody puts a clump, you know, that's a clump of hearts or something like that, right? And so, first of all, people do that and there are books that discuss it and the rules of bridge forbid using any information of that sort so it's against the law to use the kind of thing you are thinking about on the other hand if we all obeyed the law that would be a very a much a better better world so there that is a weakness of of, of features um uh is that uh I, you know it just when I look at the order of my cards, I can often tell um, things about the order of the other cards. It's worth reminding people, uh, if, and you'll stop me, but um, you know, you think, does it actually make a difference? In maybe 30 years ago, the bridge world did a wonderful experiment for us, a natural experiment. It used to be that bridge was, tournament bridge was played with hand shuffled hands. Um, in 30 years ago, it went to computer shuffled hands. and. Um, a group looked at a thousand hands from tournament play and looked at the suit distribution in the south hand. So that should be something like 4333 or whatever it is. And they found that with hand shuffle hands, it's very flat. Many too many 4333s and very few 10111s. And that's just overwhelming in the data. It's not some subtle, you know, chi squared is, you know, is, is, is 0.05. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's overwhelming in the data. Why would it happen? Well, in bridge, when I play clubs, we're all supposed to play clubs roughly. And if the cards get grouped together in clumps of four, and if I'm looking out the window and shuffling the cards, they might still be sort of a little bit clumped together, the clubs sort of together. And then when I deal four hands, they're too flat. Okay, so whether you like that story or not, it really is in the data, and uh, and so it can it, it can make a difference, and the kind of thing that you're talking about certainly makes a difference. And 
a thing I learned is there are four journals that you can currently subscribe to that are card tracking journals, shuffle tracking journals. And so people are actually out there doing that with people selling little computers and, and trying to go in. And the casinos say they really are hurting them and that they're shuffle tracking. So, so people like us are, are trying to take advantage of, 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 these, of these flaws. It's, uh, the real world is different than the world in this room. Sorry. <laughs> Terminate questions by asking one myself, and then that's the last question. <laughs> um, so it's uh, surprising the, um, the there and back shuffle just had so much difference from the regular shuffle. And one way of reading that is to say that ordinary brittle shuffle is not fit for purpose because it's, it's got this, these bizarre effects. And it's kind of disturbing to casino people, I'm sure. Um, other simple variants of ripple shuffle, like divide the pack and do a random cut on one half and then ripple shuffle. I mean, is it likely that something like this would then mean that there was no difference between the there and back and the regular deal? Well, I, th thank you. Uh, I, I hesitate. You know, I, I, I could, as you know, I could talk about shuffling for m many more than the weeks allowed in this conference. Um, <laughs> there, um, there. Uh, when, especially when people shuffle large decks, they exactly do stuff like that, and. They also inter that won't help so much, but they also intermix strip cuts like something like an overhand shuffle, and um, and so there, there's a whole regimen of techniques that people use, and we have had a hard time analyzing that. We can analyze cuts and show that cuts more or less don't matter. Straight cuts, doing them in between or any time. But if you do something like what you suggested, it's harder. Um, uh, Vita Nesteridi and Graham, uh, who are sitting over there, uh, have done some work on the kind of shuffle that you're suggesting for big decks, where you shuffle these, shuffle these, shuffle these, you have them in groups of four, and then you transfer cards in some way, which is what people actually do when they shuffle eight decks. And uh, so there's starting to be some some work geared to to those problems, but we kind of don't know how to how to combine two Markov chains, which we know everything about. That's still a problem that I find challenging. So. Okay, thank you.